SAMS is a standardized emergency management system. This is what we use in the state of California to manage disasters. Do you guys remember Katrina? Yeah. Okay, Louisiana had a little flood, right? They didn't have SAMS. That's a California thing. And why does California do this? Because we have earthquakes, floods, fire, and that's really where it comes from is our wildfire history, right? Um, so they got in a lot of trouble. In fact, George Bush took a lot of heat over this. Governor of Louisiana calls George Bush and says, he says, what do you need? You know, he did that little flyover and stuff, you know. He's on the phone, he says, what do you need? And she says, I need everything. Send me the world. They, they hang up their phone. And you know what she got? Yeah. Zip, because he didn't know how to send her to the world. Hours after the hurricane made landfall on Monday, August 29th, Blanco spoke with President Bush and assumed her request would get the state federal troops. And she said, we need your help. We need everything you've got. The governor genuinely felt at that time she had asked for help. But she did not appeal for federal troops specifically, and her press secretary says she didn't feel she needed to. You don't tell a dying man that you're not going to give him CPR unless he asks. The White House confirms that it was only on Wednesday that the governor made a specific request for federal troops. What's becoming clear is that the misunderstandings and assumptions were also very large, slowing the response to Hurricane Katrina and her victims. You got to be specific in your request. What do you need? Generators? You need rafts? You need food? You need water? You need blankets? You need shelters? You need trailers? You need, what do you need? What does the state need? Out of that, let me tell you what was born, because George Bush took a lot of heat from this, Homeland Security. And you know what else was born? Something called NIMS, National Incident Management System. You know what they did? They came to California and took SEMS, because we already had it going, and it works. So they just, basically it's SEMS, but on a national level, so you got the federal agencies involved there too. So the law is now in the U.S. of A. If you have a disaster, you have to operate under NIMS. Or in California, we operate under SIMS, which is NIMS. It's a way to manage emergency. So let me show you real quick, and I'm not trying to bore you. When you guys are out at your locations, because I know you're all over the place, you're going to need help. You're going to need resources. You're going to need answers. This is the group that's going to get it for you, and they're going to be meeting right up front over here. Okay, now if they can't come together, if they're not organized, your, your requests are never going to get answered. So let me show you how it works. It's a very systematic system. They have somebody up the top called the incident commander, because this is an incident. So the commander there would usually be the, like the superintendent. He or she is going to make all the decisions throughout the group. But look, look at this. See the five top boxes? There are four, I should say. See operations? Now that's a table of four or five people and they're going to do operations. Now operations are the doers. Those are the ones that carry out the plans. That's where the rubber meets the road. But you got, but they have to have a plan to carry out, so you go to the planning group. There's a group that just creates plans. But they can't do it by themselves because their plans have to be realistic. So they go to logistics right next to them. Those are the getters. That's your warehouseman people. They say, okay, we're going to have a plan that says we're going to have 18 helicopters come into all your sites, pick you up, and bring you to a safe place. And that's not going to work. We're going to have helicopters. We can't get helicopters, logistics says. And by the way, finance doesn't want to pay for those helicopters. So that ain't going to work. So we've got to have realistic plans that operations can carry out. So all of a sudden, we now got those four groups working together with one person at the top guiding the group, saying, here's what I need to know. Where are we going to put our sites? Is your site habitable? Is your site habitable? Can we go back to tomorrow, or do we have to find another location? How long is it going to take us to get back in business? Because kids have got to go back to school at whatever level. That's, that's the first thing that every community shoots for, is to get back to school. But this is one of the reasons, by the way, the Red Cross doesn't shut up shelters in schools anymore. Remember the old days? I, I would talk to a lot of school principals and go, well, our school's going to be a shelter. Not in the big earthquake. <coughs> if we got to move people at, at 3 a.m. because there's a gas leak in the neighborhood and move them to an elementary school, we do that. But they're out by 7. We kick them out. So you can have school at 8. Because we learned, once you put people in schools, they don't leave for weeks. So you can't get your community back in service. So now we put them in parks, 
community centers, convention centers, baseball stadiums. Do not put them in schools because you tie up everything. So that's kind of how the, the big plan works. Now, I got to be honest with you, that's a little bit overwhelming. So what about in the field where you guys are? This is what you're going to have to run at your site. 